a Prairie View. So if you're watching these videos in order, then you just sat through a 13 and a half minute set of announcements from me. Uh, or maybe you skipped through it because you thought there's nothing this guy could say over the course of 13 and a half minutes that's worth my time. And if you watched it, maybe that's what you're thinking as well. Uh, I'm not gonna apologize for the length of it. And we thought about reshooting it and leaving out some of the stuff for another week, uh, but there's always more stuff to announce. And um, so we kept it. And one of the benefits of having the same person do the announcements in the communion is now that I can have a very to the point communion meditation that'll hopefully be a little shorter, although we're already 40 seconds in. So um, when the pandemic started, one of the first things that people started doing was baking bread. It was all over social media. Uh, yeast disappeared from stores along with flour and people were posting pictures of uh, the things that they baked or tried to bake and with varying degrees of success. Uh, something else that people started doing was drinking wine. All those social drinkers who have uh, a glass of wine at the end of the day after work discovered that you don't really have to wait until five o'clock. And there was an article actually in the Wall Street Journal talking about how social drinking and day drinking uh, is becoming perhaps more of an issue since people are just at home by their liquor cabinet all the time with, with their wine. In fact, uh, Bread and wine, these two things together are just so baked in. That's a transcultural thing. Everybody has always had bread and wine. And uh, when somebody wanted uh, to, to bless Erin in a special way, wanted to give her a gift because of something wonderful she'd done, as usual, there was uh, all of a sudden on our doorstep bread and wine from the same person. And um, when Jesus was at the Last Supper, the Lord's Supper, which uh, we call the Last Supper, which they would have just called Passover, they had bread and wine. And bread and wine is what they used, is what he used as the picture to represent uh, what he was doing. The body of his that was gonna be broken, represented by the bread, and uh, the juice, the wine, uh, actually representing his blood that was gonna be spilled for us. And that was built on a Passover, which of course has got a lamb at the center of it, but also with it, the bitter herbs and the unleavened bread and the wine that was supposed to be drunk and all that. So going back 3,500 years, bread and wine are uh, a key part of the observance of uh, this special, most holy of days. And um, of course, at the Last Supper, there was a lamb there, but he was seated at the table celebrating with them and he was gonna be slaughtered for our sins the next day. And that's what we remember. Uh, not just bread is bread, wine is wine, that's great stuff, but that Jesus is the lamb that was slain for us. And he appropriated the bread and the wine or perhaps even seeded that idea into all cultures uh, so that we would all have this common touch point. We all take something starchy, make it into flour and bake it. We all take fruit and we preserve it all around the world so that we can come to this table together and remember when we take the bread that represents his body and we drink the wine or the juice or whatever that represents his blood that we can remember he was the lamb that paid the price for our sins so that we can be reconciled to God so that we can be in God's house forever. We can be at his banqueting table forever and we can uh, rejoice at the wedding supper of the Lamb when the Christ and the church are united together forever. And that's what we celebrate when we celebrate communion.